Hi, this is Joyce, the voice of Joyce. I know many of you rely upon me for what you think is truth and what we know is truth. For years, I've been writing about when will the people speak? When will they rise up? and decide that this is the moment to change our history. Well, it's happened. And it's happened for a very good reason. Black lives do matter. And they've been targeted for destruction for years. And the killing of one more black man for no reason was the light that lit the match of freedom and liberty. We've all joined in in these protests. Whether you're white, you're black, you're Hispanic, we've joined you. We've joined you because the cause is just. Your cause is just. There's no reason that police should be able to flagrantly destroy your lives for no reason and then not be held accountable. Everyone must be held accountable. Doesn't matter if you're the president or the janitor, we all have rules to live by. And if we don't, we should, because we are responsible for our actions. In America today, it is a grave pity that COVID-19 is really targeting the Black community and the Hispanic community disproportionately. It is a grave concern that black lives have been killed for no reason than they're black. And it is an even graver concern for us to protest without protesting for a change in our society. We already know that Zoom and online classes don't work for many parts of America. Kids are losing an entire school year because we are not connected universally to the web, nor are we all connected to computers so that we can absorb the knowledge that's being dispensed. That's gotta change, folks. And there is so much else that must change. Protest works, but protest without follow-up to every one of your Congress people on the city, state, and federal level has no meaning. We want change in America. We want change for the better. We know now that we can't rely upon the corporations or the corporation's largesse or the largesse of this government. They work with corporations. Three quarters of the money for relief went to major corporations. And I've got to count in the $1.5 trillion in tax cuts that were given the year before. I guess the administration thought we would be silent forever. We're not silent any longer. But the way to make this work is to put pressure on Congress put pressure on your state legislature and your city legislature. We know the fishes. We know we don't have adequate health care. 
We know that people are going to be food insufficient. We know that our education is not equal, and we know that jobs are not equal opportunity either. Well, now's the time. When people lost their lives during the Freedom March, LBJ then enacted the Civil Rights Bill. Cost him a great deal. It cost him the South. But that doesn't matter anymore. I'd like to cost everyone who is against equal justice and equal rights and equal opportunity, their congressional jobs, every single one of them. It's not enough to just do education, health care. We need infrastructure. We need infrastructure that does not allow black lives to be placed in the areas of toxic fumes or Hispanic lives in the path of toxic fumes or any life in the path of toxic fumes. We need data and we need it quickly to make all of our lives safe. There are too many fissures in our society, but that is a wake-up call that says there are too many opportunities not to address. I'm sorry for death of Black people. I'm sorry that I believe the COVID virus will claim even more lives in the next two weeks. I'm not sorry for the protests. Peaceful protests are the way we change our society and we let it be known that the status quo is not acceptable. I read in the paper that 2.5 million folks became employed. Well, that's interesting, but we're still over 14% unemployed. We're not just not counting correctly. 40 million people are still without sufficient funds to survive. 50 million people still are food insufficient. We need to address those problems. We need to activate supply chains from if it's not coming directly from the farm, it should be coming from the corporations so that they can feed people in need. Nothing's gone away. We've just magnified and put a glass over the problems. And now we see them fine. It's 2020 like it was before and we can see very clearly. 2.3 million people are incarcerated. Probably a third of them should be, and most of them are African Americans. What's their crime? Minor offenses of some sort, and now they're going to be condemned to die because of the virus? This is totally unconscionable. This is an extension of slavery because if you're in a federal prison, you are contributing to the corporate welfare system. You are actually learning a skill that can be used to benefit the corporations. No wonder 2.3 million are incarcerated. It is a disgrace. Our country is a disgrace. The world looks upon us with pity. Our once great society that everyone envied. CDC, 
It hasn't been funded for years. It's run by amateurs or scientists. Not Dr. Fauci, he knows his job. But the others who are on top, you've got the head of a pharmaceutical company and a scientist. And Trump listens to neither. We have an autocrat in power. He loves the fact that we are rioting in the streets and we are looting and we are then looking to him like we need law and order. And for folks who don't read the facts, that's all they see is us rioting. They don't see the legal protests. They only see the injustice. And as far as they're concerned, that injustice is not to we the people, it's to the police. And yet we know that the police mostly do not suffer consequences for their actions. Well, it's time to change. Protect and serve is why we have an active police force. We don't need to federalize the National Guard. The riots after 10 days are really now just peaceful protests. Take it to the next step. Take it to your congressman, whatever state you're in, and demand change. Change that will give us quantitative easing for the middle and lower classes. They can do it easily, and the debt no longer matters. They can write it off just like they did after World War II or any other time in our history when things were bad. Debt doesn't matter, stimulus does. And the way to do stimulus is do it easy. Either you're going to employ people at the 80 or 90% of their old salaries so that they don't have to rely on minimal unemployment insurance or unemployment insurance that may be dispensed incorrectly, give them a cash payout that matters. $5,000 to 154 million people equals only 800 billion bucks. You want to give more money to more people? Then it could cost you $1.5 trillion but at least people have a lifeline. They can buy food. Won't take them through many, many months since rents mostly are over $1,000, but it will take them somewhere. If you gave the people $1.7 trillion, you could give $154 million, $12,000 each. It could go to everyone 18 years and older, Medicaid or Medicare, employed or unemployed. If billionaires can make 10 to 15% more on their money during these hard times for everyone else, why aren't the lower and middle classes rewarded some way? Some way that's meaningful. 1.2 thousand dollars. What is that? Maybe food on your table for a family of four? It's not a lifeline. And we, the people, need a lifeline. Don't think the economy is turning around because we're opening up the states. In two weeks' time, we're going to be closing them again because too many people in the protests didn't wear masks. So 
Too soon to clap our hands at this point. There have been no winners, no winners yet, but there is a possibility that this could be a win-win for Black Lives and others as well. We need to crush COVID and we need to crush deaths of despair as well and start concentrating on education, healthcare, Wi-Fi, computers, data knowledge, infrastructure at every single step of the way. Transportation is power for a lot of us. Invest in it, invest in us, invest in our communities. Then we'll know that racism has been talked about, concerned all of us, and is on the way to being defeated. Thank you for listening, everyone. See you next week. And I know that I'm going to bet on that. I'm here for the long haul. And that's what we're all about. But change must happen now for all of us. Take care. Write me if you wish at the voice of Joyce at earthlink.net and submit any questions you wish me to answer. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.